Okay, happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome to our Snag It webinar, which is part of the Distance Education Webinar Wednesday series for fall 2017. So we're focusing today on how you can use Snag It to create annotated screenshots and actually some simple videos as well. And we are very fortunate to have with us today Andre Ortiz, who is a Snag It guru, and he uh, works for Southwestern College as our training uh, our training guru, our training services coordinator. So he's going to be walking us through um, some of the ways that you can use Snagit in your classes, uh, in emails, on web pages. There are really lots of applications for this product. So before we get into talking about it, I wanted to um, briefly go through with you how you can get Snagit as part of our site license if you don't have it yet. Uh, so I'm going to uh, go through some slides here and Andre is going to talk you through uh, how you can get Snagit on your work computer or on a home computer. Right. Hi Andre. Hi. Happy Wednesday everyone. Uh, so um, two potential ways to get Snagit. One of them is if you're on campus and you're asking for Snagit on your desktop or if for some reason you have a desktop uh, and a laptop if you want it on both. Um, ideally, you would want to go through the MySWC portal, sign in, um, and then through the Campus Apps button on the top, <clears throat> you're going to see that ServiceNow icon. Click that ServiceNow icon and then just request um, it, um, Snagit to be installed on your computer or computers. Um, the more information you can provide to them to identify the computer, most computers here on campus have an SC sticker number on them. So just give them the, um, the SC number because they may be able to do it remotely um, as long as your computer is on and visible on the network. So uh, that's one way to do it. That's for uh, on-campus computers. If you're requesting it off-site and you want to install it at home on your laptop or your desktop, ideally you would go through uh, SharePoint so if you log into SharePoint, uh, you'll click the Departments tab as soon as you get to the SharePoint uh, homepage. And then from there, you go into Training Services, which is the last link on that list. And then the next window you're going to see is um, you're going to see a link that says TechSmith. Click on TechSmith, and then you'll be br uh, brought over to the submission form for TechSmith. You're going to see an Add Document link, where if you click it, you'll be prompted with a form for you to fill out. Okay, um, you're required to submit your first name, last name, SWC ID, school department or office, and a phone or extension. Once you do that, you're going to get some links that tell, uh, take you to the download links for Camtasia and Snagit. So each one has a different link um, and each one has a different product key. So make sure that you keep track of both of those. When you're taken to the link that on the actual website, you're going to see a little caption at the bottom that says already have a software key, then you just need to download the actual application installer for either Windows or Mac for each application also. So um, keep in mind, it's two independent downloads, one for Camtasia, one for Snagit. Okay. And if you have two different laptops, you can actually install it on both as part of our work at home agreement. Yep. Same product key um, for both installations, yes. Mm -hmm. And Camtasia is pretty good about alerting you about updates. It'll tell you, oh, there's a new update available. Do you want to update now or later? Um, so if you get those prompts to update the applications, I would highly recommend that you do so. Okay, well, I'm going to stop sharing here so that Andre can show you everything you can do with Snagit. Okay, all right. So it's um, my turn to share my screen. All right. So there I am. You can see my... Um, Desktop is pretty clean because I, I don't want to have a lot of clutter to confuse you. But I do have my Snagit icon on my desktop right off the top left corner over there. So if you don't have an icon, you can always go ahead and create one. If you don't have an icon and you just want to run Snagit, you can always just go to your start menu and then start typing the name of the application that you're trying to run. And if you have it installed, sure enough, you'll see it. Um, so this is my Snagit capture tool window. As you can see, I have a few options right off the bat um, that I can turn on or turn off. I have a, a capture button. Basically, if I hit capture, it'll initiate the actual capture. Right down here, as you can see, as soon as I hover over it, it says, oh, your hotkey is print screen. So that means that if I were to press print screen on my keyboard, I basically initiate a capture right off the bat. 
on laptops and Macs, it may be a little tricky because some laptops, print screen, um, while it may be on your keyboard, it's not activated unless you have like your FN lock key enabled on your keyboard. So you have to be wary of that. On Macs, I'm not sure what the default will be on that, um, but it's, it's a good way for you to figure it out and then basically setting up one key to do the capture for you, okay? Um, you're gonna see that right off the bat, we start off with an all-in-one solution. So um, it's basically telling me you can do one or the other, or, or well, actually one or the other, not both, um, but you get to decide what you wanna do each time you run it. If you're always gonna be doing images, then basically just set it to an image, and then every time you hit capture, in this case, click print screen or hit print screen on your keyboard, it will default to image. If you're gonna be doing a video, then set it to video, and every time that you hit print screen on your keyboard or hit your hotkey button, it will go ahead and do video. Ideally, you would wanna leave it as an all-in-one because you get, you get the choice every single time to decide what you wanna do, okay? Um, some of these switch settings, like preview and editor, um, it's, it's very handy to preview everything in your editor, especially if you're gonna be working with annotated screenshots. That way you get to see what it looks like as you're working on it before you commit to a final save. Uh, copy to clipboard, if you copy it to the clipboard, that means that you have it available for you to use in other applications right off the bat. You can just go ahead and do a, a screenshot and paste it in Word or Excel, et cetera, et cetera. Ideally, you would do all the edits and uh, snag it before you paste over. So right now I have that one disabled. Capture cursor, uh, it's basically uh, signaling that it will include the cursor arrow key or the prompt key, et cetera, et cetera. So this is um, up to you if you wanna keep it for video. It might be a good idea to capture the cursor because that way if you're signaling stuff on your recording with your mouse, then you'll see it. Okay, let me go back. Um, five second delay, uh, I think, with, yeah, delay the, ca the start of capture by five seconds to allow for additional setup time. So ideally when you're recording video, if you wanna have like a five second um, buffer time before you start recording, that will go ahead and do it for you. Okay, so let me go ahead and um, capture so you can see what's gonna happen. And before I do that, let me open up uh, an application. I'm just gonna open up Word here. And then if I go to snag it and say capture, as you can see, my screen um, switches over to like a crosshair and this crosshair is basically asking me what is the area of capture you want to capture. Um, and it's pretty uh, nifty because this will actually detect whether you want a full uh, screen capture, in this case, the full window, or if you just wanna do a selection, an area of a selection. Uh, so right now, if I'm concentrating on a particular area of the screen, like basically the pane where you can go ahead and type, if I do that, it's going to focus on that. And then uh, this toolbar that I now get basically tells me, what do you want to do? Do you want to capture an image or do you want to record a video? Right? Um, it tells me the resolution for either uh, image or video that I'm about to capture. If I'm unhappy with the selection that I just made, I can always redo the selection or I can just cancel out of it. Uh, but for right now, let me go ahead and capture an image. Okay. And as soon as you capture the image, you're gonna notice that the Snagit editor, which is a second window, right? We have two different windows. We have the Snagit toolbar and we have the Snagit editor. The editor is where you go in and do all the fancy stuff like throw in arrows, text boxes, call outs, shapes, uh, fill colors with a different color. You can do stamps, you can crop. And as you can see, there's a more button that if you click to expand, you have um, selection, cutout, pen, line. You have a whole bunch of um, options that you can do, um, like eraser if you actually want to erase part of a, a screenshot that you captured by mistake, um, blur, which is very useful for hiding sensitive information. Um, you can magnify, basically blow something up to make it even bigger than it already is, uh, or just move stuff around. Um, so right now, uh, as you can see down here, it actually also does a very uh, nifty thing of keeping track of all the screen captures that you've done, whether they're images, all the ones that you see that don't have this like little film strip rails on the ends, those are images. Um, sorry, those are videos, but the ones that um, don't, those are images. So they, they stay on your um, recent history for you to continue using if you need them to. And the cool thing about them is that they actually maintain, as you can see, any annotations that you've done, whether you've saved them or not, which is pretty cool. Um, but let me go back to the one I just captured. 
So as you can see, it's a, it's a static image. I can't really do um, anything as far as movement goes, but when it comes to adding annotations, whether they're arrows, text boxes, et cetera, et cetera, I just need to select the object. In this case, if I'm doing arrows, um, I can pick from quick styles, which is basically a predefined gallery of styles for arrows that you can pick from, or you could just make your own, right? Um, if you were to pick one and for example, maybe change the color to like a green, you're going to see that now you have a new preset that you can go ahead and add to your list of quick styles for you to continue using just by clicking on the little plus sign over here. And as you can see, it is now a new preset that I can go ahead and select from. Basically just click and um, draw it on the actual screenshot. And there's my arrow, right? Um, that little um, addition of additional quick styles is available for all of the annotations that you have here at the top, text, callouts, shapes, et cetera, et cetera. So um, take advantage of it, if, specifically if you're gonna be using one particular style of an arrow, uh, a callout, or a shape, okay? Um, so that's arrows. If you need to move stuff around, you do need to make sure that you switch from your tool to a move tool so that you can move your arrow and you don't just necessarily move the, the location, you can also change the orientation by making sure that you click on the sizing handles, which are the little circles on the edges of the shapes, or in this case, the arrow. Uh, but you can go ahead and move, you can resize, et cetera, et cetera. You can change colors. Right now it's a green. Maybe I wanna go with a different shade of green, maybe a lighter green. And then notice how, since it detected a change, it's now asking me, do you wanna save this one now? So if you do, you hit the little plus. If you don't, you don't have to. Um, you have additional options like shadows. You wanna apply shadows, uh, colors, uh, the ending style, the line style, and the arrow end style. Uh, thickness, opacity, start size, end size, uh, Bezier curve, which I don't know what it does. Oh, look at that. Um, gives you a squiggly arrow instead of a straight arrow. So you have all these options to pick from uh, for your callouts. Okay, any questions so far? One. Is there a way to superimpose one screenshot over another, like Photoshop layering? Um, I'm going to superimpose an image of an iPhone on the, on the screenshot. So if I click and draw, there's a superimposed image. Okay, so we have arrows, we have text, uh, and as you can see, text, we have um, just standard text boxes that you can add. You have the option to change the fill, the outline, whether you want a shadow or not. Basically, this little grid specifies where the shadow is gonna show up. In this case, the shadow would be in the bottom center. Uh, if you put it in the center, I think it's hard to see the shadow, but the, the top left, the top right, that would make it a lot um, easier to spot. Uh, font face, if you wanna go uh, from a standard Arial to some other, I was thinking too hard. Um, so you have a standard list of fonts, Arial, Arial, Black, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you can change the font size, the line width, and then if you expand advanced, you can see that you can apply some additional effects like bold, italic, underline. You can change the alignment. You can change the, um, I believe this is the spacing, vertical spacing or vertical alignment within the image. And then your opacity, if you wanna make your text a little uh, faded. Um, padding, I think padding is like space around the edges of your text box so that you always make sure that the text doesn't get too pushed to the edges, which might make it hard to read. Um, callouts, you have um, all these options. You've got text boxes, whether they're, they're square, you can have arrows with text, you can have rectangular, rounded corner rectangulars, and then just the regular callouts uh, with the little um, speech line. Um, you also have shapes. You can do rectangles uh, in all, course shapes and colors um, whether they're hollow or filled and then you have these other um, options like polygons so if you need to do some odd shape I think this what it would do yeah you basically just trace the shape that you want and then the more times you click the more vertices and lines you end up having so so Andre I did a little research while uh -huh. you were playing uh, with this image and it looks like the new version of Snagit does allow us to do this. So if you wanna try this out, um, the instructions say to drag an image from your film strip at the bottom onto mm -hmm. your current image. 
And then let's see what happens. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yep, there it is. Of course, you may want to resize it so that it doesn't take up uh, more than your original canvas did because then you end up with um, a transparent edge um, beyond the original capture. And this would be yeah, a great yeah, um, time to use shadow because it would really separate those two images if Correct. that was the effect you're going for. Yeah. Wow. I learned now, something new today. Um, notice how my arrow did go <laughs> behind. So if you want to make sure that your arrow is on top of that, I think if you right click uh, your order, if you say bring to front, now it's visible. So it is a layer, um, layer approach. Just make sure that whatever you want to be at the top is all the way forward. Uh, that way it's visible. Thank you. Um, okay, so that's um, snagging and capturing images. Of course, once you're done, if you need to save it, you can. Basically, if you go to File and do a Save, it will go ahead and save it. But if you need to save it as another format, if you go into File, Save As, you can see that you have quite a list of options. You've got your standard uh, GIF, JPEG, uh, PDF, if you want to save as a PDF, notice how there's a Snagit uh, capture file format as well. TIFF, if you want high resolution images, BMP, PSD, TGA, et cetera, et cetera. So depending on the need that you might have, you have all these different options to, to save the image as. Um, if you just do a file save, like I said, it will retain all the changes that you've made. Um, to the the screenshot capture and all of the callouts that you've added, whether they're uh, callouts from your menu up here or if they're images from your film strip, like we just found out we can do, um, they stay here and they stay there with the option to to be able to be edited later on. Okay, um, you do have some options to import and export from the cloud. You can import stuff from Google Drive. So if you already have images in Google Drive, just bring them in. Let's see, what are some of the most popular ways to use Snagit with Canvas, PowerPoint, sample info? Okay, well, um, I'll let Tracy handle the Canvas portion. I can do the PowerPoint. Sure. Uh, so I use this a lot when I want to bring an annotated image into my course. So if I have a, a page in a module that's walking through how to do something, I will put a text direction and then I'll put an annotated screenshot in to show them where that button is or what the process is to do something. And th some of the annotations that Andre has been talking about like arrows um, or uh, the stamps for like a number one, number two, number three, I'll put those on the screenshot I took and then I'll put that in the Canvas page so students can see the directions um, as they're reading them. And um, actually, the, the, under the annotations, you actually have a, a step option, which gives you the one, two, three. Uh, so instead of you actually um, creating the individual objects for one, two, three, basically just pull them from here and then just drag them to where you need them to. And notice how you have one that actually points to a particular part. So if you click and add, uh, and again, just keep in mind, you can change, of course, um, if you rotate, you're gonna notice, oh, look at that. There's number two and there's number three. So basically just click and point and it starts the sequence for you. I was trying to rotate to see what would happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the number changes too. So if you needed to change the order, look at that, the number goes along with it. And Angela had a follow-up question um, about if they need to be fully accessible. So yes, any image that you put in Canvas, you would want to have a text alternative for it. And so for um, the image that I was just describing, my alt text would be something like, first do this, second do this, third do this. Mm -hmm. Now for PowerPoint, um, well, if you're, if you're gonna be demonstrating a process in PowerPoint and you wanna do screenshots of what you're capturing, then ideally you would go ahead and use Snagit to capture your images, do all of your annotations. Once you've got everything done, uh, whether you're saving it or not, if you just right click down here on your on your recent history and copy it, if you go to PowerPoint and start off a new presentation, if you right click and paste, you get everything in one fell swoop. 
And the cool thing about this is that all of your annotations, whether they're arrows, call out boxes, uh, text boxes, um, stamps, et cetera, et cetera, even the, the, the blur stuff for filtering sensitive information, all of that comes along with it. You don't have to do any of that in PowerPoint. It's all done for you already. Okay. You also could put these into a Word document or an email. Right. Anywhere that you can put text and images, you could put an annotated screenshot. Right. Since it's still in the, in the buffer, the copy buffer, I could paste this across all different applications that allow me to insert an image um, with or without annotations for that matter. Uh, let me show you now. So let me go ahead and close my editor. So I can actually close the editor without fearing uh, losing any of the work I've done because again, all of this gets stored down here. Um, and as you can see, if I were to scroll all the way back, I can actually find the first screenshot I did. I think that was it, yeah. Um, so let me go ahead and close the editor so I can go back to my Snagit um, capture toolbar. And let me show you what it um, looks like as, as far as creating a, a video capture. All right, so capture, because I actually want to capture the entire window. So click that. And my toolbar for some reason moves over here. That's okay. I'm bringing it back. So now I'm going to record video. And there's my counter, three, two, one. So now, believe it or not, I am recording my screen. And if I were to um, um, work on a presentation, if I'm adding slides, uh, et cetera, et cetera, even if you're just presenting a slideshow, you can go ahead and capture it while you're presenting. I'll show you what the button looks like in a minute. So here's my recording. Uh, and as you can see, I'm still in the same Snagit editor window, uh, which still shows me um, the annotations at the top. But unfortunately, once you record a video, the only thing you can do as far as editing is trimming on the video. And as you can see down here, if you've used Camtasia already, you're going to notice that the playhead is pretty identical to the uh, playhead in Camtasia. I have a green and red selection mark. That basically just tells me I can select. Once I've selected, I can cut. That is all you can do. I mean, the other stuff that you can do, you could actually export the video as an animated GIF, which is a sequence of images that make it look like a video or an animated, uh, oh, sorry, save the frame as a PNG. So an in individual frame would be saved as a still image of the video clip. But unfortunately, that's all you can do uh, with videos in, in Snagit. Um, if you did need to do a, additional fancy stuff, you could go ahead and just go ahead and share it over to Camtasia Studio and then do all, all of your editing, your fancy editing um, in Camtasia Studio. But as far as videos go for Snagit, trimming is about all you can do and then exporting as a GIF. Or um, if you needed to save it as an MP4, you could go ahead and do File Save As and notice that the default is MP4. <laughs> so I'll pop in and just share one way that I use Snagit for video. Um, as you all know, I love Camtasia for my instructional videos. But sometimes if I just want to record a really quick video, like video feedback for a student, or I just want to capture a certain action, um, rather than say an annotated screenshot, maybe I want to actually click the buttons in a three-step process and make a little video of it. I'll use Snagit for that because it's so fast. Um, and one of the other really nice things about Snagit video is you can switch between webcam and screencast which is great if you're giving video feedback, you can start by smiling at your students, saying hello, and then with one click, you can go into the screencast mode and look at the screen together. And then you can click back to the webcam if you want to. So for very, um, very simple videos that allow both, I, I am a fan of Snagit. Um, going back to the resolution question, uh, so um, in this case, uh, because I selected a very small screen capture for this one, you can see that my resolution is 174 by 305. But when you select bigger resolu or bigger captures, like the screen that I did earlier, this is 1138 by 899. And um, you can always resize these to make them smaller, only if they're bigger. You don't want to resize something that's small into big because then you lose quality. Um, but uh, if you need to make them smaller because you're going to just put them on a screen for a PowerPoint, um, if you want to have high quality for printing, 
then basically leave it at, at whatever high resolution you might have initially. But basically anytime that you uh, decide to capture a new um, image, um, just by hitting the capture and you selecting the, in this case, if it's the entire application, it will be as, um, as big as the resolution of the monitor, which in this case happens to be uh, 1680 by 1050. So whatever the highest resolution is on your, on your, on your screen size, it will, it will capture the image at that resolution. And then from there, again, you can go down. But uh, if you start small, don't blow it up because you'll lose quality. It looks like we hit most of the questions that have come up in the chat. So maybe this is a good time to encourage a few more questions since we have some time. Um, and while you guys are thinking about questions you might have, um, I wanted to share something for Jackie who was asking how else you might be able to use this. So I have a file that I can share um, that is hopefully familiar to you and I'll show you, well, I'll see if you can see where I use Snagit in it. Okay, so here, is a training calendar that might be familiar to some of you. This is our Canvas training schedule. And at the end of that training schedule, I put some information about additional training opportunities. And so as you can see right here, I've got an image that is taken in Canvas. Uh, I put an arrow to show people where the help item is on the global navigation menu. And then up here, I have circled two of the areas that I mentioned in the paragraph above. And if you look really closely, you might see one other feature that Andre talked about in this screenshot. Can anyone see it? Bonus points. Can anyone see another feature that I used? The shadow? Not the shadow. Oh, I tr it's true, I did. I do have shadow <laughs> on, I guess. But there's something else. Anyone? Okay, I'm going to give you a clue. I'm going to start circling in the general area. Anyone see it? Is it that pink circle? Mm-hmm. Can you see in there? I'm going to make it really big. So this is a, this is a real account. And so I have blurred the person's oh. face in that circle. So again, blurring is great for sensitive information. So I don't want people to see the person who is in there. I want them to focus on the image. Um, if it was a person's name, I could do that as well. Yeah. So notice how you didn't even notice that. That's the nice <laughs> thing about the blur. Does anyone want to see a demo of how to blur the sensitive? Oh, there we go. Angela just requested that. So yeah, right. let's go ahead and do it. So let me share my screen again. Go into desktop two. Uh, go into the editor. So I'm going to pick uh, this image right here. Uh, and maybe I want to blur out the text, even though it's kind of small. Um, let me blow it up to make it a little easier to read. So right here, if I wanted to blur out the text here, if I go to my annotations and I go into my blur, Okay, I have a, a few options. I have a smooth blur of intensity 25, a uh, blur of intensity 50, intensity, seven, intensity 75, and then intensity 100. I can also pixelate. So if you don't want to do a blur, but you want to do a pixelate, um, you have the two options. So I'm just going to do a standard blur. And then all I have to do is just hover over the area and click and drag. I'm basically just clicking and holding the mouse button. And then as soon as I let go, there's my blur. If I had done the pixelate option, I'm gonna try, the, as you can see, the pixels gets, get bigger as you uh, reach the intensity, a higher intensity. So I'm gonna stay with the 25. And then same deal, just click and drag over, and now it's concealed, right? The other thing you could do to conceal sensitive information is basically put um, objects on top of the uh, information and the, um, I guess the other way that you could do it is, let's see, so let me do a shape. I'm going to do a filled shape and I'm just going to go over and do that. I could do that. Mm -hmm. But then it basically defeats the purpose of you concealing or, or um, signaling that you're concealing sensitive information. So um, you would probably want to stick to a blur. Okay. So are there other features people would like to see demoed since we are on an image right now? Stamp? Oh, stamp. Sure. 
Okay, so for stamps, uh, if you go to stamp, uh, you have quite a few categories that you can pick from. You have uh, my stamps. So my stamps, as you can see, is empty right now because I don't have any. Um, if, uh, let's see, what if, look at that. I can't add more. I can add my own. So if you have an image that's saved as a PDF, and I think ideally you would want a transparent background on that PDF file, um, you can add your own. Um, but if you don't want to add your own and you just want to work with the stock ones that you have, you have some accents, you've got stuff for algebra um, in a black or red tone, you've got business, charts and graphs, cursors for OS 10 or PC. Um, you've got emojis, look at that, yay, emojis. Um, you can also do geometry, black and red tones, hand-drawn in English or German and French, which I've never seen before. Oh, look at that, okay. Uh, keyboard, so if you need to indicate keyboard stuff, try doing um, Mac in black. So um, basically when you're signaling um, people like maybe pressing a key or a function key on their keyboard if you wanted to do that, uh, if you're being particular to a platform, in this case OS 10, you can do that. Uh, if you go to the PC side of it, then of course you've got your PC keys from your keyboard. You also have maps, which is pretty cool because you can actually just bring in um, uh, like signs that you would see on the road for interstates, detours, all that kind of stuff. Um, you've got medical numbers, uh, some Snagit also. Uh, so if you have a dark background Snagit or a light background Snagit, you can work with both of those. And then you have sim symbols and vehicles. So um, basically just pick the category, pick the stamp that you want, and then just um, draw it or click it. And then you have all the options to resize. Uh, and of course, you've got the option to do a shadow. Opacity would just make it um, translucent. Uh, rotate, you can rotate. That green handle is always for rotating. Uh, and then the white handles, the white round handles are for resizing. Okay, so that's stamp. Any other questions? Can we demo a shape? That's another really common one. Yeah, of course. Uh, let me work with this transparent background. That way it's easier. And let me actually just fill the background with white so it's easier to read to. Fill white. There we go. So if I do a shape, as you can see, I have rectangles, I have circles or ellipses, uh, and then I've got rounded corner rectangles. So if you want just a standard rectangle, you click and drag. And uh, if you want a perfect square or a perfect circle, notice how right now I'm actually achieving that. If you hold down the shift key as you're clicking and dragging, you get a perfect square, okay? Uh, the same for the ellipses. If, if I just click and drag, notice how that ellipses can go either um, wider or taller. But if I hold my circle, that's just a perfect circle that I can draw. And maybe you make a, uh, my own emojis. But yeah, you can, you can do all that stuff. Um, again, perfect circles or perfect squares, just hold down the shift key on your keyboard and you'll be able to um, to draw them. Okay, so here are a couple of examples of uh, Snagit screenshots using some of the things that we talked about today. Um, you'll notice you also can um, use a box shape with text in it. That's one of the features as well. Same thing with arrows. All right, so um, I think we've covered most questions, although we do have another minute or two if any come to you. And Usually your best questions come to you after the event is done. So uh, I have Andre's contact information here, um, the extension as well as the direct line. And Andre also does training for Camtasia. So he is a great resource for all the TechSmith products that are part of our site license. And that will take us to the end of our time. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. I'm gonna stop the recording now and I look forward to seeing you at our next webinar.